What's up guys, it's Justin Centrum from EliteLifeNutrition.com and you're listening to the Elite Life Podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk about, Jim Rome had a great quote and he said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. In today's episode, I want to talk about that quote, but also add a lot more to it and talk about something that Jim Rohn left out. So before we do that, I wanted to mention quickly, you go to EliteLifeNutrition.com for the greatest supplements in the world, natural products, herbs, and of course our products like this one here, Natural Sleep, which has ashwagandha, lemon balm, valerian root, hops, magnesium, calcium, and melatonin all blended into one to give you the very best sleep imaginable. So if you have trouble sleeping, if you have trouble with being too wound up at night, a little too wired, if you have an excitatory brain, if you have thoughts of racing, you know, racing thoughts about what you're going to do the next day, if you're a busy person and it's tough for you to wind down at night and just relax and actually have a nice, deep, refreshing sleep, seven to eight hours every night, you should probably check this product out because it is amazing. It helps do all those things. It helps relax you down, helps calm your system down, it helps you naturally get into that peak tranquil state just before sleep where you're ready to just doze off and feel like a million bucks when you wake up the next day seven eight hours later it really does give you an amazing sleep i take it myself every single night absolutely love it and uh i know you guys are going to absolutely love it too so go to elitelifenutrition.com to check it out today that said let's dive right into today's episode so as i mentioned jim Rohn had a lot of great quotes i mean pretty pretty brilliant man um talked about a lot of things, but one of his most famous quotes was, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, which is very, very true, still applicable today. When you spend time with people, they tend to rub off on you. They tend to, whether good or bad, and so that's that's really where the quote comes into place is, like if you're spending your time with bad people, you tend to become a bad person. You tend to get some of their qualities. If you spend your time with good people, you spend your time with smart people, you tend to get smarter. You tend to to have better things coming your way and tends to make you and condition you into a better person because you pick up on the little things that they're doing. You pick up on their attitudes towards life. You pick up on the way they talk, their mannerisms, their speech. You you pick up on their goals, their aspirations, or you pick up on their lack there of goals and aspirations and negative thoughts and negative patterns that they do and, you know, negative body language that they have and the way they view the world, their outlook on the world, if it's negative, if it's poor, if it's sour, if, you know, all they want to do is scam people or rip people off or, you know, take advantage of people or fight people or go to the bar and drink or just watch porn and, you know, or or call strippers or hookers or hookers, whatever it is, you start to pick up on these things when you're around people. It's just how we are as human beings. We're, We're social creatures. We're biologically wired to be social. We're biologically wired to be part of tribes and to pick up on the people around us. And so, when we're picking up on people around us, we can pick up on the good things or we can pick up on the bad things. And when Jim Rohn said we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with, he was absolutely correct. When we consciously pick the right people to put into our lives, our lives become better. We become better as human beings. We become better. We can Again, we can become smarter. We can become more thoughtful. We can become more um, grounded. We can become more happy. Even people's energy, just in general, like he didn't ever touch on this to my extent, to my knowledge, in in some of his speeches and such, but even people's energy, like we're we're actually, and I'm learning more about this myself right now, but we're energetic beings. So energetically, we just pick up on people's energy. And you know this already intuitively, but you can go around someone who has negative energy and, you know, within a couple of minutes, you start to feel like crap yourself because that person is dragging you down. They're an energy vampire. They're zapping your energy. And they're also giving you some of their energy. So as energetic beings, we have this energy field around us. And it doesn't just extend to our physical bodies, but actually goes outside of us. So we're energy and our energy is basically shooting out on all sides within a few feet. They say, I don't know the exact number, but it's like three to five feet around us. Like that's the, the radius of our energy. So literally our energy, and, and again, this, is, this isn't this is just like, you know, woo woo, 21st century age, new st- like new age concept stuff. It's actually studied in, in, in metaphysics now. 
and, and quantum physics. They're studying this stuff more and more where they're looking at atoms and you can see that the atom, the more and more they dig into the atom, the more and more they show that it's actually just energy and that the, the, the physical matter, the, it, it's like harder and harder to see where that matter begins. Like there's less and less matter than they ever realized. The cell is actually 99.9% .9 energy or just really just open space. In Joe Dispenza talks about this as well. Uh, it's just really just open space. And at the very center of it is the nucleus with the tiniest bit of like 0.1 or 0 0.0001 being actual matter. So the rest of the cell is, is, is actually just open space. It's, it's, it's energy in between that. And so like the more you dive into what we really are, like what human beings are, the more you realize we're energetic beings. We're not physical beings. Like we have a physical body and it looks, you know, and appears to be physical and the, the physical world certainly looks to be physical and material. Absolutely. But uh, the more you dive into what's, what it's really made up of, the, the shocking, the more shocking it really is to discover that we really are energetic and energy at, at our core. But anyway, so with that said, the being energetic beings, when we come into the presence of other people, their energy doesn't just like, you know, make us feel a certain way or like, you know, someone's energy is like, all right, they're negative. So, you know, maybe we don't really want to be around them. They're actually, their energy is, is crossing into our energy fields. Their energy is literally going into our space. Like it's coming in contact with our energy, whether we're not physically, we don't have to physically touch them or not, but their energy is literally coming into contact with our energy and making us feel a certain way physically making us feel a certain way, emotionally making us feel a certain way, mentally making us feel a certain way. But um, so when you know these things, you, you then have to be a lot more picky about who you want to come in contact with, who you want to spend your time with. Do you want to spend your time with people who are negative, who are always talking about, you know, why their life sucks and why they can't get ahead? Or do you want to spend time with people who are optimistic and who have who have good energy, who lift your energy up, who have like a higher vibration um, equal to or greater than yours so that then you can match their vi vibration or you can be on the same vibration as them, which is a positive one. It literally, is, you know, it can make or break your day. It can make or break your interactions. It can make or break your life when you're doing this over and over again. And again, if you're spending your time with negative people with negative energies over time, it leads to negative outcomes. Okay, so with that said, that's that's really just breaking down Jim Rohn and his quote. But I think even more important these days is uh, an an addendum to the you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and that is you are the average of the five things you spend the most time doing. So, do you spend your time on productive things? Do you spend your time on positive things? Do you spend your time doing things that are going to benefit you, like say exercise or meditation or yoga or reading or learning or hanging out with smart intellectual people or motivating people or going to a business conference or going to a networking event. Excuse me, do you spend your time doing these things? Do you live your life pushing the needle forward every single day or do you spend your time watching porn? Do you spend your time playing video games? Do you spend your time watching reruns? Do you spend your time watching cartoons? Do you spend your time binge watching Netflix? Do you spend your time smoking cigarettes? Do you spend your time, I don't know, like you just name one bad thing after the next, eating junk food. You can just go on and on. But, but, the, but the thing is you have to get into the habit of of recognizing what you're spending your time doing. There's only so many hours in a day. There's 24 hours in a day. You sleep just say eight hours. You go to the bathroom for an hour or two. There's a guy, we tend to enjoy ourselves in the bathroom and take a little longer reading and you know doing phone stuff or whatever else. We enjoy ourselves in the bathroom, especially as men. But you got eight hours of sleep. You got say an hour or two in the bathroom. You have a couple of hours of eating food you know, meals just combined throughout the day and, um, you know, showering, you can throw that in the bathroom, I guess. 
But you add up these hours and you think that there's 24 hours in a day, but when you take away the essentials of things that you have to actually do, like even getting up, the process of getting up in the morning for many people or driving to work for many people, um, you know, putting on your clothes, picking out your outfits, the process of doing these essential things every single day added up to the sleep that you have to take away. So you really just narrow it down and all of a sudden you're looking at like maybe six to nine hours of actual time to get productive things done in a day and never mind actual like work schedule like if you have work that day and you work full time you can just automatically in many cases for many people take off another eight to ten hours so some people really only have a couple of hours I mean and, and this is where you got to really focus on your schedule and dial it down like really dial it down if you want to get ahead you got to cut out some of these extra things. You got to come out some, you know, maybe you're not spending an hour or two in the bathroom anymore if you're a guy, but you only have an hour or two extra in a day. You got to really make things go quick. You know, maybe you're not spending a half hour picking out your outfits. Maybe you spend a, uh, you know, a half hour picking out your outfits for a whole week so you already have them ready to go. Maybe you don't spend an hour or half hour laying in bed in the morning. Maybe you jump right out of bed and it takes you you know, 20 seconds to, to get yourself out of bed and now you're ready to go. Now you got an extra half hour for your day. Because if you really think about it, you don't have that many hours in a day to get things done. And now you throw in, you know, half hour, at least a half hour, but really more like 45 to an hour and a half of total gym time, like driving to the gym, getting ready, and then working out for 45 minutes to an hour, lifting weights, like whatever, maybe even two hours for some people. You do that five times a week, you just cut an hour and a half out of your week for five days. It's like, it's very easy to let the day go by and to lose out on this productive time if you're not keeping track of it. And so when it comes to doing all this extracurricular stuff, if you're doing all the shit like, like, you know, the bad stuff, the, the Netflix binging, the porn watching, the smoking cigarettes or alcohol or eating crappy food or watching reruns or cartoons or just any of the vices that we all have in our lives if you're doing that stuff and that's taking an hour two three hours out of the day you're not getting ahead in life it's just that simple you are not getting yourself ahead you're not even giving yourself an opportunity to get ahead because there just aren't that many hours in a day and that extra couple of hours that you do get in your day you're wasting it and so when it comes to the average of the five things you spend the most time doing, I'm talking about what you're going to spend your time doing when you have those hours to spend doing. I'm not talking about eight hours of sleep because you need your eight hours of sleep. I'm not talking about, you know, eight hours of work because you have to work right now. If you have to work, you have to work. That's 16 hours. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's 16 hours right there. But the rest of those eight hours, okay, you need to shower. Okay, you need to go to the bathroom. Okay, you need to eat. Maybe you got five, six hours left. Do not waste it on binge watching Netflix. Do not waste it on watching porn. Do not waste it on playing video games. You only have a few hours every day. If you're smart, you can get yourself a few extra hours, but do not waste it on these things. Because if you do, you're not gonna be successful. You're not gonna get ahead. If you're happy being where you're at in life and you're happy staying there, then feel free to do that. But if you wanna get ahead, if you wanna get the things you want out of life, if you wanna succeed and take it to the next level, you got to really dial down on your schedule. you got to really figure out exactly what you need to get done in your 24-hour day and schedule it exactly how you got to schedule it to get those things done. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back in a couple of days with another Elite Life podcast. In the meantime, go to EliteLifeNutrition.com. Check out the best vitamins and supplements in the world.